hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Actually, Jason Newland, not Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And if you need me to explain to you why it's only safe to listen to a recording which is aimed at helping you to sleep, You know, if you if you if you need me to explain why you need to only listen when you can safely close your eyes, then um, possibly you need to turn it off and uh, get yourself a new brain, because <laughs> it's kind of obvious. It's. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that, you know, like, oh, what if someone sues you because they listen to this sleep session and they're driving a car and they fall asleep and, well, how could that ever be held up in court? I mean, that, that imagine that, the judge would just, I imagine the judge would laugh. Everyone would laugh. Imagine going to a, a lawyer and saying, like, I need you to represent me in court. Oh, what, what is it, sir? Or, or madam? What, 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 do you need, what do you need me to represent you for? Well, I was listening to an audio recording on a podcast whilst I was driving and I fell asleep. The recording caused me to fall asleep, it was so boring, it was so boring, I actually fell asleep while I was driving, and imagine a lawyer saying, that's just, I can't believe that, that is, wow, we're going to be able to, this is the easiest case I've ever had in my life, this is going to be a walk in a park, or a swim in the pond, this is going to be an easy, easy, what could be easier the judge will just like he won't even need to go to court it will just be like of course you, you'll, you'll win this very simple in fact I feel like just giving you money now out of my own account because it's so it's just it's a simple simple one so what was the uh, what was the recording called what was the podcast called? Oh, it's called Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Ah. I've just discovered a possible problem with our upcoming relationship regarding a court case that is never going to happen. What's that then? I don't understand. What could it possibly be? Hmm? Well, your podcast was called it was, uh, Let Me Bore You to Sleep. It's probably the most self explanatory podcast title that you could ever have as far as what the intention is you know from the podcaster's perspective I don't get it what do you mean I don't know I don't understand I listened to the, the let me bore you to sleep and I thought that it'd make me feel really awake and I thought 
that I'd I'd feel really full of energy and full of I I feel energized. I mean, when I'm at home, normally I listen to the Let Me Boy You to Sleep sessions. When I'm cutting down trees, when I'm up there with a chainsaw, and I'm, I've got my headphones on because it's quite noisy, you see, and uh, I'm up there, you know, like a hundred foot in the sky well, with my chainsaw, and I'm ch- chopping down the trees. Now I, I thought, well, I, you know, I need to keep awake. I need, I need to just keep myself really focused. And uh, so I thought, I know what I'll do. Instead of just having the headphones on to block out the noise of the chainsaw, because it's ever so noisy, you know. It's like sometimes I, I, I just I, oh go. I wish I could hear something else. I wish there was something else I could listen to other than the chainsaw. And you never used to be like that. I mean, when I first started cutting down trees with chainsaws, it, it was my like my hobby. I, I really enjoyed it. In fact, what I used to do when I got home, I'd I'd actually go on to the internet, go on to YouTube, and it, I, there was a video that had sounds of chainsaws, and I'd just sit there listening to it for hours and hours. I loved it. But for some reason, after about 10 years, the the novelty of the sounds of the chainsaws seemed to just disappear. And uh, I don't know why. But then I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll get myself uh, 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 like some headphones, you know, like that with noise reduction, but at the same time, I could listen to a podcast. I mean, to be fair, at the beginning, I didn't know that I was going to listen to a podcast. I thought I might just listen to music. But, you know, just... Meant to start with, to be honest with you, I used to listen to the videos of the chainsaws at the same time. So I'd have the chainsaw on, and I'd have the the sound of the chainsaw in the headphones, and then someone pointed out that that was ridiculous. And, you know, I like to learn, I like to do different things, I I like to listen, I like to listen to people's critique. And, you know, when they said, well, why are you listening to chainsaw sounds when you've got headphones on to block out the sounds of the chainsaw? And I thought, he, 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 you like, that made me laugh. Because that's how I laugh. I go, he, he, he. That, that's my, I'm very famous. I'm very well known in the village for the way I laugh. He, he, like that. Some people think it's a, a bit of a strange laugh, but I, I, I'm like it, I like it, because it, it just makes me feel like I'm, I'm wanted, and I'm a known quantity in my village, and I think everybody should have something special about them. But then, what happened is, I thought, yeah, maybe I should just get rid of the the chainsaw sounds on my headphones because that is a little bit silly, isn't it? I mean, that that would be like going uh, deep sea diving with a big tank of gas, uh, of air rather, but um, well, gas would be weird, wouldn't it? You're just floating the whole time, you can never get down to the bottom. <laughs> and then I thought, uh, I get me, yeah, you if instead of having oxygen and you put in water, that would be the same, wouldn't it? It'd be, you imagine dry, you know, diving down into the bottom of the ocean and then you like turn on the tank to get some breath and it just fills your lungs with water. It's kind of, uh, it, it wouldn't be nice. Uh, trust me, I know it happened to me a couple of times. But I just put it down to um, I was popular with the other divers. So I um, I listened to this podcast 
let me bore you to sleep. And I thought, this is going to keep me wide awake. And I would, the it's like the amphetamine of podcasts. That's what I thought. And, uh, but it didn't. It really didn't. I never. I was so surprised. And I woke up and I was asleep. And I looked down, I thought, because obviously I lost, I wasn't kind of holding the chainsaw properly. And I was thinking, where's my legs gone? <laughs> and I looked on the floor and they were down on the ground. <laughs> I had to laugh. But yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's why I want to take him to court. Because, you know, he didn't say, I mean, he, he tells jokes and says silly things and he, you know, he did say at the beginning, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. But I thought it was a joke. And I'd laugh. <laughs> I would, I'd laugh. And it was like, it was like a trigger every time I heard it. I laughed. And, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just want to, I want to take him to court. Because, uh, you know, I mean, I know it's obviously saved me money on shoes. But that's not the point. I want me money. I want... I want, I don't know if revenge is the right word. I mean, when I think of revenge, I think of Revenge of Jaws, the movie. And, uh, but, you know, is it Revenge of the Jedi as well? I, I don't know, I can't remember. But, I'd, you know, I just, I think that if you're going to make a podcast that's going to send people to sleep, then you really should... Be more, be more obvious with, you know, the warnings, uh, because the, it was very, very vague. I think you could say very, very vague, and uh, I wasn't happy. If I'm honest, and I'm not, I'm not miserable. I mean, I, I still have a good laugh because <laughs> uh, it's. It's it's what I do. I don't let the world get to me. But I really would, you know. I, I, if nothing else comes of this, at least maybe make the title of the podcast a bit more obvious. You know, get the title so it's not so vague. Anyway, what do you think, Mr. Mister uh, Lawyer? Um... Well, it depends. What does it depend on? Well, are you going to pay me? Yes, of course I'm going to pay you. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take it then. Because I'm a lawyer, and I take people's money, and I don't care why. What are you doing? Why are you singing? I don't know. I just something I do whenever I get a a new a new client and give me you know money and stuff. Oh, that's a bit strange. The singing lawyer. But uh, okay, Jason, you can get on with it now. Oh, thank you. That's okay. I think it would be, it's nice to do a little, something a little bit different, isn't it, at the beginning? Because, you know, you always just say, oh, my name's Jason Newland. Land. What's that even about? Did you just say, what's it about? That's a different accent. Yeah, I know. I know, <laughs> I know, it. I know it is. But it's hard to get back into the accent when I change my voice back to you again. That's a different accent again. What do what you what you mean? What you what you talking about? It's the same accent that I've already been speaking. That I was always doing. <laughs> oh, see, so, yeah. Only listen when you can safely close your eyes. That wasted fifteen minutes. That's good. So, 
<sighs> oh, Sunday afternoon here, and in various other places as well. I'm sure that I don't have a special time zone just for my living quarters. And last night, I didn't make any recordings at all because I couldn't be bothered. I just, I don't know, it's something about... Partly is I wanted to watch the boxing that was on Sky. It was... It was like £7.99 to buy it, and it started at 2 o'clock in the morning, which is fine. And I was going to buy it. I was gonna, it was two world title fights, and, you know, I love boxing. But then as I got closer to the time, I thought, I don't really know the boxers that are fighting. You know, I, I'm... I'm a boxing fan, but I don't know every boxer. You know, there's... In today's world, it would be easier to know, like, 30, 40 years ago, you'd know every... If you're a boxing fan, you'd probably know most of the world title holders, the world champions. But because there's so many different titles in each category and there's so many more categories than there used to be so it's it's very it's difficult unless there's uh, unless they stand out as being phenomenal or they're maybe you know from England and they get a bit of press coverage and or there's some people I've been following their careers from the start like Chris Eubank Jr or Anthony Joshua Uh, who else Uh, Huey Fury Joe Joyce these are people that I've watched from their very first fight whether on TV or on YouTube but I've followed their careers right from the beginning and who else have I followed? Amir Khan. I mean, watched I watched Amir Khan in the Olympics. Olympics. Yeah, the Olympics. See, I remember, and this was back in nineteen uh, two thousand, two thousand and. Uh, what would it be 2008 Olympics Amir Khan won the silver he didn't get the gold did he he won the silver or did he get the gold no I'm pretty sure he won the silver medal or did he get the gold oh there's no way of knowing Shall I ask Alexa? Hopefully it's not too loud. If it is, then... Alexa, did Amir Khan win gold at the Olympics? This might answer your question. In a welterweight matchup on Saturday, April 20th, Amir Khan lost to Terence Crawford by TKO after six rounds. Did that answer your question? No, it didn't. Why would you... Why? Don't be sarcastic. Alexa, don't be sarcastic with me. Sorry, I'm not sure. Alexa, I love you. Whoa, that just made me skip a beat. (laughs) Alexa, do you love me? I like you as a friend. (laughs) <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh my goodness. I can't even pull an electrical product. I can't I can't even get love out of an electrical product. Oh my goodness. I like you as a friend. I've only ever heard that from humans. That has got to be the lowest point of my life. <laughs> oh dear. Wow. Okay, I'll stop talking to Alexa because it's not helping me. But Amir Khan, he, I followed him. And tell him literally, because we live too far away to just literally follow him around. But that was the last Olympics that, with the boxing that I think was good because they had a score points that were on the screen. Which for me is the best way to do it. It's a scoring point. You you know, every time a punch goes to the head or hits the stomach or whatever, it's, it's a point. And you could see as the round was going on, which boxer was ahead so there was no need to wait for the score at the end I mean, they still did give a score they didn't just get out of the ring at the end of the fight and just walk off and no one everyone just carried on eating their sandwiches they did give a score and you know award the win to whoever it was but I like that and I'd quite like to see that in professional boxing because professional boxing is dodgy so dodgy you know it's like Tyson Fury fought Deontay Wilder a few months back or it might actually might have been December so quite a while back but he outboxed Deontay the whole of the fight and then in the last round, Deontay Wilder knocked Tyson Fury onto the floor. But Tyson Fury got back up and started to beat up Deontay Wilder again. And then when it came to the scorecards, when it came to the score at the end, it was classed as a draw. And there's no way it was a draw. It was it was it was a win. Yeah, Tyson Fury lost that last round because it's an automatic ten eight. You know, eight two points knocked off for the person that gets knocked down. So if someone gets knocked down, doesn't matter what they do during the round, they're gonna lose. They they lose that round because they've been knocked on the floor. As far as I'm aware. So if that had been a points, if that had been scored by points by, you know, a, I don't know, a, a computer system or whatever they used to use on the Olympics, then Tyson Fury would have won that. But then it's quite un, quite interesting because they do do they do score the like the commentators have a system so when they're watching it you know they're saying and now he's punching him and he's still punching him and now he's moving his feet around and you know that kind of stuff the quite often they'll show how many punches were thrown and how many punches were landed and it doesn't tally up at all with the actual eventual scorecards. So the three people watching the fight, the judges, who knows what they're thinking about? They might be thinking about what they're going to have for dinner. If one of them's just had an argument with their wife or husband or uh, 
zebra, whatever you know they do, then they might be thinking about that and not really taking much notice of the actual boxing event taking place in front of their eyes. I mean, there was one case recently. <laughs> it's it's true. It's is uh, the judge. One of the judges, because three judges, in a in a non-title fight, the referee decides the winner. In a title fight, the judges. In professional boxing, uh, ref in the. Uh, in the Olympics and stuff, it's it's judges and stuff. I think, but uh, in a recent fight, a re recent boxing match, a boxer, <laughs> the judge, didn't even know which boxer, which was who was who. So he put down someone. Uh, to lose but he put down he put it in the wrong person the wrong name so let's say I forget who it was but let's say Smith and Jones Smith clearly won the fight and all the other judges agreed but he put down that Jones won the fight thinking that Jones was Smith and they didn't look anything like each other I mean clearly one had a size 10 feet and the other one had a size 9 feet I mean anyone could have seen that and one of those uh, had a, a mole on his left ear I mean how could the judges not see that it was only a little mole it was tiny but you know and you could see that one of the boxes clearly had uh I don't know, he just had something about him. It, uh, it seemed quite uh, very focused, very focused. But at the same time, relaxed, you know? How could the judge not see that? Oh yeah, plus, <laughs> I forgot this bit. Plus, you know, each boxer had their name on their shorts. I and mean, that's, uh, that's a little bit of a giveaway. I mean, that's, uh, you know, I suppose the judge could say, yeah, but I never got to see their shorts because they never walked up to me. And But the thing is, if you can't see the name of the shorts, you can't see the name on the shorts, then you can't really be a referee or a judge, rather, if your eyesight isn't capable of seeing the name on the shorts of the boxer because if you can't see that how are you going to see the the punches and you know what I mean and I know I know that a lot of people probably listen to this some people will be thinking or saying or whatever what are you talking about boxing for that's boring yeah, that's the point. It's a boring podcast and it's supposed to be boring. That is the idea behind this podcast. Yes, indeed. I had some weird dreams last night. I mean, last night I'll... You know, I had, I had a little bit of a dip, a little bit of a dip in uh, mood and that. So I kind of got to the point where I couldn't really do anything. So I just went to bed. I didn't even properly go to bed. I don't mean I sort of <laughs> just like lie half on the bed and half on the floor. Not that kind of thing. But I... I didn't put Andre into the living room and anything like that. In fact, Andre was lying on the bed and I just got onto the bed and just cuddled him, went to sleep. 
eventually he got off and I think yeah he was licking my feet and my toes at one point but he didn't bite them which I was very surprised because you know normally he bites my toes it's just one of his things that he likes to do but he didn't so I think he got a sense that he perhaps it wasn't the best time to be doing that because with all the best uh, intentions if he does that when I'm asleep there's chances I might kick out you know I'll be asleep I won't sort of mean to do it so which is why I generally don't have him in the bed with me when I'm asleep when I've got my socks off because of that when I've got my socks on it doesn't bother me but uh, I woke up and he'd he'd already got off earlier and I think he came back because I <laughs> it's quite weird he's uh, sometimes he struggles to get onto the bed it's easier when when the bed cover's pulled over and he can just grab hold of the mattress and get up that way. But when I'm in bed and I've got the the, the I don't know the quilt covering me, he can't quite get his a grip on it. So what I did is I was putting my hand down onto the floor I was still kind of asleep and I just picked him up so he could you know get up and as soon as he was at bed level he let go of my hand and he crawled right over my face <laughs> he just he walked over my face and I was trying to do it so I didn't have to wake myself up I was half asleep and I thought I'll just pick you up and that and he just walked over me like, oh, thank you, mate. And he went to sleep. He is quite cute. Sometimes he's he likes to. So if I'm like tickling his chin or stroking his head or you know tickling his tummy or give me like I like to give him massages. So I give him I kind of massages paw you know his fingers and his hands and his legs and his the joints and you know just I don't know I just I did massage at college years ago and I'd probably do the same if I had a baby I kind of it's massage is good it's it's a bonding thing and it's it's good to just move the the limbs around and I think that we all all could benefit if we just did that with each other just really it doesn't have to be necessarily a big full on massage but just the movement of the legs just picking the legs up and pushing them and perhaps putting a bit of pressure on the bottom of the, of the not pressure but like a bit of massage pressure on the back, lower back and just massaging the chest area and maybe the stomach just and the back of the neck as well and the and the back and it, well yeah full body massage really but it just touches healing and I do do it to myself I often touch myself and it's it's a he, you know for healing purposes so I'll Sometimes I'll like stroke my arm, and I'll kind of stroke my fingers. It just feels I'm doing it now. It feels quite nice, and just sort of gently just stroke my fingers up and down my arm. It feels nice. It's like this is free. This is free pleasure. There's no alcohol, no drugs, no caffeine, no nothing. It's just natural physical pleasure in fact I'm doing it up my forearm I'm getting goose pumps not goose bumps but goose pumps I'm getting goose bumps in my biceps 
Oh no, wait a minute, it's not a goose bump, it's actually my bicep. That's how small it is. I have biceps the size of a goose bump. But it's a start, isn't it? Gotta start somewhere. I mean, the best place to start is at the beginning. That's what I find. I mean, ask any reader, any avid reader, the best type way to start is at the beginning. Like watching a film, best. You might only miss the first five minutes, but you might miss a big bit of it, an important part of the film. Then you might not. Now I'm sure I was talking about something. Oh, I don't really remember what. What was I talking about? Oh, giving yourself physical pleasure. I quite like massaging my scalp. And it's this isn't really about having done massage I could do a massage course because I didn't learn to do self massage in the massage course I mean I think the only the thing I noticed the big muscle group because the the thighs are probably the, the biggest muscle the biggest muscle in, in your body is and the strongest one is possibly your thighs. And if you put your, if you do, if you stroke down your leg to where your knee is, you know, the top of your leg, and then move down probably a few inches, and there's the side of your leg. And I, I noticed years ago, this is when I was in my early 20s, that there's. This, it's not the side of the leg, but it's kind of in between the top and the side. And it's a muscle group that when you massage it, it feels really nice. It's just a case of like digging your fingers in, but only only in a way that, you know, as long as it feels okay. Obviously, if you've got a, if you've got some kind of injury in your leg, don't do it because... You know, don't imagine that. Yeah, I've, uh, <laughs> I'm going to take you to court. I listened to your recording, and uh, you said to dig my fingers deep into my leg to massage the muscle. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, I only just had an operation on my leg. And there's lots of stitches in it, and all the way up the thigh, and it was really painful. And and then when I started digging my fingers in, it 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 really hurt and it injured it even more because the the stitches and the operation hadn't healed yet. And that's my fault. How? Well, you told me to put my fingers and dig it into the to the into the thigh and therefore you're responsible for what I did because yeah I can't think for myself I can imagine I mean luckily in England we're not as um, litigious is it litigious litigious no lit lit litigit litigit <laughs> can't say the word but litigating litigious I'm sure it's lit, lit, litigious whatever but we don't there's there's less of the suing each other constantly that apparently happens more in America than um, than most places apparently it's supposed to be quite a big thing but in England it's it is growing and we basically England is becoming we we embrace America in a big way I'm not sure America realizes that is 
we our biggest influence in the world is America our biggest influence whether it's culturally musically films um, behavior even speech America is England's biggest influence and it has been for a long time and it's so there's a there's a big connection between America and England that I don't I'm not sure everyone kind of acknowledges we are related we are brother and sister America and England are brother and sister and not just because we used to own America but we are the same family and you know technically we love each other America and England love each other of course not everybody loves everyone else and some people are anti-American some people are anti-English there's plenty of seems to be quite plenty of anti Americans that live in America and plenty of anti-English that live in England that's kind of the way it is but we're brothers and sisters we're related like closely the closest bond and it seems that we're closer in some ways than even America and Canada are even though America and Canada are joined together and Canadians have a not an American accent but it's you know it's a similar similar kind of accent and but then I don't know culturally with Canada how how much it, of America is kind of spread there but then I imagine America has been very much influenced by Mexico as well because Mexico being next door their next door neighbor you know there's no river there's no there's no sea separating them as far as I'm concerned if there's no sea if you're not an island every every country if it's an island everything's an island if you've got sea surrounding you you're an island you're not in Ireland <laughs> you're an island like England is an island or Britain is an island Ireland is an is an island the Isle of Man is an island you know and then no let's call it a continent no let's not let's call it an island if you're surrounded by water it's just one big country really <laughs> controversial it's a mixture between being controversial and just really ignorant isn't it it's like, what are you talking about you're talking nonsense yeah that's what I'm supposed to be doing I'm supposed to be talking absolute nonsense that's the point of this dibbly dobbly do so I mean look we've got we've copied not copied but we're kind of well, maybe but we've we kind of followed America in having the leader like our new prime minister is um Uh, I don't know what's the word populist he's he's popular you know he's famous he's he's a celebrity just like Donald Trump was before becoming president he was a celebrity very very famous one in America well around the world I suppose but in America and um, what's his name 
not Trump, Boris, not Yeltsin, Johnson. He is really popular because of his personality, because he's funny, because he's people, even people that aren't members of his, you know, party, people that are, he's, he's got fans that are Labour and Liberals and uh, just because of him, they might not like what he stands for, but they still perhaps like him, they like, they find him funny, not everybody obviously, because he's been controversial. And uh, I'm not sure he's, uh, he's a bit obsessed with letterboxes, but I mean, when's the last time he even went near a letterbox? That's all I'd like to ask. I'm sure he's got people to do that for him, to go post letters. So he's uh, <laughs> he's the new Prime Minister as from... Tuesday, well Wednesday I think it was, he was diagnosed into it, so what's it now, Sunday, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so it's now the fifth day of him being Prime Minister of this great nation of ours, so the politicians now, they say, and even on the news, they say Ireland, instead of saying Ireland like we used to, they say the island of Ireland. So why don't we do that with all the other countries that are islands? The island of Britain. Because, you know, Britain, we've got Scotland, we've got Wales, we've got Cornwall, there's some people that want Cornwall to be a different country, in fact didn't it used to be I think at one time didn't Cornwall be, wasn't that classed as a, a separate country, again I'm making it up, sounds like it could be true, but you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I just, I just want my chainsaw back. I don't care. I just remember talking about audios. There's a couple of funny things I remember when it comes to self-help audios. One was uh, Timothy Spall, the actor. I think it's Timothy Spall, but he was in Avi the Same Pet and so many different things. He's a brilliant actor and he played a salesman. And it might have been an updated version of Death of a Salesman, but I'm not sure. But anyway, he was a salesman and he played he played a he was on the way to a to see a customer. And he was trying to motivate himself, so he had an audio tape playing while he was driving. And all, and for those that have ever listened to motivational audios, and I've I have um, been doing that for many years, and I've listened to so many different ones. But this this all is said, and I've listened to sales. Uh, sales recordings as well, motivational for selling. And yeah, I like all that stuff. Uh, but this recording just said, start, it was just a voice shouting, sell, sell. And it was some swear words, effing sell, sell. Just a bit of shouting it out at him. And it was just funny. And another it was this sitcom thing. I think it was six floor or six six stories high with 
a comedian. Comedian is on seven out of ten cats. Sean Locke, that's it. So Sean Locke, I think he wrote and he starred in this sitcom that was in the 90s, I think. It was really good. I liked it, but I don't know why they didn't make more episodes of it. And it was set in a tower block. And I think Sean Locke played a swimming, not instructor, but a, a lifeguard. And occasionally what they would do is they would show other tenants in the, the council tower block so other people uh, there was one that had a donkey living in his room one of his rooms um, and there was a few different things but there was they kept coming back to one person uh, and he was making he was doing what I've been doing for the last 13 years making audios and he was making a relaxation session so he was like sitting there and he had his microphone in his hand and he had a tape recorder and he was saying now you're going to feel really relaxed and calm and and you know he was just they showed him talking for about 30 seconds and then there'd be loud music from one of the other flats. <laughs> and the man do, making the relaxation sessions would just lose it. They'd start shouting and chucking a, chucking a tape recorder around and punching a wall and stuff like that. And it's just... It's funny that someone's like, you know, trying to make a relaxation session when they're really not relaxed themselves As, and I've kind of been in that situation in the past where I've been making recording and I don't know like I'm sitting here making a relaxation session and it's really quiet and then a lawnmower starts and admittedly I don't act all, all weird and start getting angry but occasionally it catches me off guard especially when I've set the time out and I'm kind of you know know what I'm going to do and I'm in the mood to do it and then suddenly you know loud music starts getting played I mean the other day we had two in the same block just got a fence in our garden over the fence there's another block of council places and we actually had two of those flats blaring music out really loud but different songs I was just like oh just it's, this is it was just confusing my mind so it's like they were having a competition I guess one was it might be in a case of one had loud music and the other one just put on their own loud music to blank out that person's loud music and so then they turned theirs up and you know tit tit for tit you know so I uh, now I've got some new headphones so I can listen to music and because my other headphones they weren't very loud and they had but I've got some wireless ones so I can listen to music and it's loud if I want it to be and it blocks everything else out there's no sound outside of the headphones and I can also watch TV videos and you know whatever with it as well so that's really good it just means that I I don't have to listen to other people's music. Although it gets... It's weirder though, because when I was younger, or in previous places of living, sometimes there'd be people like younger than me playing like bass music, like music with really loud bass and the 
the whole building would be shaking, you know. You know the way that when a car goes past and it's got really loud bass and it does shake the building, doesn't it? Well, imagine having that inside one of the rooms of the building. And that that that's difficult. And then I moved into this place a few years back and there was loud music in the room next to me. And initially I was like, oh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my I was preparing to get angry. But it wasn't bass music, there was no bass, it wasn't shaking anything, it was just volume. Plus, he was playing sounds that I liked. He was playing music that I liked. Stuff from the 80s. So I, I kind of thought, well, I'll just listen to his music. So I just, I turned mine off. And I just you know, sat at the computer doing what I was doing and... I just listened to his music till he turned it off and then I then I turned mine on. Because he, everything he played was good. It wasn't all 80s, some of it was 70s. It was the jam and stuff that I don't play myself but I do like. And stuff from my early, early childhood that was really popular back then, like late 70s. But I never bought albums in the late 70s. I never bought records, tapes or anything like that. But I did listen to it on the radio and I did listen to it on Top of the Pops. But then I think my very first album that I ever bought, it was a tape. And I'm pretty sure it was the best of Buddy Holly now when I say that was the first album I bought it wasn't the first album I had because I got bought albums for birthdays and stuff uh, like record you know proper diff, you know album vinyl and I had the best I think the Bee Gees I had an ABBA album I had uh, the Baron Knights album, which I still f wish I had, because that was one of my favourite albums of all time. And I used to listen to my dad's albums as well. So he had... He had an album which was theme tunes from films, like famous films, like Star Wars, Superman, um, the uh, you know, spaghetti western films, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and uh, Two Thousand One Space Odyssey, and. You know, there's like loads of really famous films at that time. And I loved that album. And I just lay down on my bed and I just listened to it. And I just felt so relaxed. And I'd let the, the, the vibrations penetrate me. And because you get that, even though it wasn't... Um, bass you know it's just a normal turntable with speakers probably inbuilt inbuilt probably but there's that energy isn't there music the energy I think it, it does kind of enter your body it fills you fills you with the energy connects perhaps with your energy I don't know how it works but it's sound is an energy sound is a it's a frequency isn't it and I just used to find it really really relaxing uh, 
and I do I've, I've done that in the past I have listened to like classical music I've spent a lot you know many times I've listened to classical music to relax but for me classical music does not involve opera and that's where a lot of classical music will have opera on an album and I realised that you know, a lot of the classical music musicians they wrote music for operas but I don't I don't, I don't really like the singing uh, I prefer to just listen to the music when it comes to you know piano or like a big band or you know whatever I don't mean band as an elastic band I mean like music drums or trumpet I'm not so crazy about the trumpet but violin I suppose really my favourite musical instruments to listen to auditorily would be the piano the violin and the bass is it the bass cello the cello So, because cello is just a, basically cello is a pregnant violin, isn't it? So it's, I liked, I used to play the violin when I was a kid, when I was little, but I think the cello would have been more fun because you didn't have to, you know, you had to get it from one place to another, but once it was there, you didn't have to hold it up to your chin. You'd have to be a giant, wouldn't you, to have a cello? Why would I think it was called a bass? Maybe it's called a bass as well. A cello, bass. Anyway, that's enough of this for today. I'll speak to you next time. Bye, bye, bye.